asse na mba ni meche na obodo ana ala obodo kwe nsubu zu ga na amaji Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember, this. today I come in peace. Once again, I bring you information on things that are happening in Nigeria, more especially in the southern part of Nigeria. We will continue to talk. We will never be silent. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. We are not hating on anybody. We are not preaching a hate speech. And we are not talking down on anybody. We are preaching the message of freedom. That is the message Mazen Nandekano have left for us to preach. And that is exactly what we are preaching. The message of freedom. The message of unity. The message of love. That is what we have come with. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter the propaganda they are pushing out there. Do not allow that propaganda to deter you. Do not allow the propaganda to get hold of you. A lot more propaganda are going to come against IPOB, against the Biafras, against Mazen Nandekan, against all the Southerners. But do not allow yourself to be moved because we are getting to the end of the road. Victory is going to be short. Very, very soon, victory is coming. And you know, when it is getting harder, that is when the victory is almost there. Don't give up at this time. Do not give up. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you hear. This is the time for us to support each other. This is the time for us to support each other more than ever. Support everybody you can. Everybody that is fighting for freedom in that very country called Nigeria. More especially for the southern part of Nigeria. This is the time for us to hold each other in our hands. This is not time to fight against each other. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what you hear. This is time to close up your ear about every propaganda. The only thing that has to concern you now is the freedom of the people of the southern part of Nigeria. Your own freedom. Because when the southern part of Nigeria is free, you that is from the southern part of Nigeria, you will be free also. When you see the Biafrans crying about freedom, it is not just the freedom of Biafran, it is the freedom of the Oduduans. When you see the Odudua crying about freedom, it is not just about the freedom of Odudua, it is the freedom of the Biafrans. When you see people talking about freedom, it is just not about the freedom of the southern part of Nigeria, but the freedom of every indigenous tribe in every country called Nigeria. When Biafra becomes free, every other tribe in that very country called Nigeria will be free. They will have right to control whatever they have and enjoy their wealth. That is why you have to support the struggle. Support the struggle. This is not the time to fight each other. Whoever is making any effort, we are blessed on different areas. We are blessed on different areas, not equally. People have different grace. People have different favors. In whichever area you are blessed with, continue to use it. Use it to push the actualization of Biafra. Use it to push the actualization of Ududua. Use it to push the freedom of the southern part of Nigeria. This is time for us to unite with each other. It is not time to look back. Now it is very clear to you and I that everything that we have been told in the past about ourselves are lies. Everything that we have been told against our tr fellow tribes are lies. When they tell you that Igbo man loves money, Igbo man cannot rule, Igbo man cannot do it, it was all a lie. When they told you that a Yoruba man is a coward, a Yoruba man is a coward, it's all a lie. These were all lies that we have been pushed to make us divided. They push all these lies to make us divided. They tell you that Igbo man don't value anything. Once you give him money, he can sell anything sellable. But can you believe me that our Supreme Leader Mazin Nandi Kano was given $15 billion all he well with a lot of gifts for him to abandon Biafra. But he refused. Today, he is sacrificing even his own life for your own sake. He is a Biafra, an Igbo man for that matter. 15.9 billion dollars was given to Mazen Nandekam and he rejected it. Not only that, very juicy offers, even including an oil well, he rejected it. All he wanted was Biafra. What does that tell you? Igbos don't just love money. What they are fighting for is what is legitimate. They struggle to make money, they struggle to survive and make sure they don't remain beggars. Igbos don't beg, they work hard. To get whatever they want. You see the propaganda some of them we are pushing about our fellow Yoruba brothers. They told you that Yorubas are cowards. 
Yorubas are not cowards. From everything that is happening presently, you can see that Yorubas are very intelligent. They are not cowards. You can see the protest. Even in the face of the police, when police told them not to come out in Lagos to protest, the Yorubas came out in mass to protest. Even while the police were shooting, they were protesting. As you can see, the so-called Jagaban, who feel that he owns the Yoruba land, is telling them not to talk about Odudua. They are preaching about Odudua, and Odudua is holding rally. Sunday Ibowo is holding rally. Much more people are coming on, on board following Sunday Ibowo. Watch, go and watch the rallies that Sunday Ibowo has held. If you have not seen any, go and watch it online. There are so many, even on my page, I have some of them in my channel. Go and watch the rallies. You see the number of people that are coming out. But in the past, they were pushing all sort of lies. Which could not hold water. They only pushed those lies to divide us. But today, thank God, we are all awake. They even pushed a lie to tell you that a Yoruba man and, a, and an Igbo man can never work together. Which is a pure lie. Who told you that a Yoruba man and an Igbo man cannot work together? Today, the Ududu ones and the Biafrans are working together. They are campaigning together. They are holding protests together. Standing up for each other. Speaking up for each other. Are you still going to be believing all those lies? Are you still going to be believing all those propaganda? A time for propaganda have gone. They have failed woefully. That is why the Fulani Janjaweed is scared. That is why they are scared. When you see them coming to issue communicate, when you see them coming to attack the southern governors, coming to attack the southerners online, whenever they make their speech, they come, the northern group say this, northern group say that. When they come, they make their speech. You will see it clearly that these people are scared. They are very scared because the unity of the Yorubas and the unity of the both the Dudua and the Biafrans is scaring them. The unity of Ududua and Biafra is the end of Nigeria, and that unity has come. That is why they are scared. And they can't escape it. The time has come. In the issue of the middle belt, I know that some of our middle belt and brothers are willing to come out. But sometimes, I really cannot be able to stand for, I don't know what they are standing for. I don't know their own fate for now. Because I saw a video where PDP governors in the north, they say not and governors of PDP, we are issuing a speech. Not and governors of PDP, and I saw, I saw, I saw what is his name, uh, Benue State Governor there, Otto Samuel Otto. I saw Samuel Otto standing with not governors making a speech. I was wondering, he should be from the middle bed and should be fighting for the middle bed, not the not governors. He should be speaking for the middle bed. Why are they not coming out to forge that their middle bed and make it stand? Why are they not speaking up? Maybe you can watch the video with me and see him there. We, the PDP governors of the North, we just finished our meeting and uh, we resolve one of our issues that the APC government has been intimidating our members, the PDP governors, and uh, we want that intimidation to be stopped because most of our members are imp intimidated persistently and uh, we're not comfortable. Secondly, we all resolve that the APC government has not provided the leadership needed in the North. And so we, the PDP governors in the North, are not satisfied with the leadership of the APC government in the North. And we are drawing the attention that uh, even though the leadership is from the north, the north is also being surcharged. And uh, we want that observation to be noted. And we, the governors, also have resolved that on our own, we should continue to do the best for our people, as we are already doing in our various states. They, are called, they were intimidated to leave. They were intimidated. I hope you understand that language. They didn't live on their accord, all of them. And we want that to be stopped. That is it. When I saw the video, I marveled. I said, why should he be standing with the North? You know, politicians can never be trusted. They can be trusted for anything. But I wish that somebody from that middle bed will come out openly forge a strong force that we can be able to know have an identity that we can be able to be speaking of they should have an identity that we can be able to speak and move on so that they can get the support of the southerners i hope very soon that will happen very soon that will happen 
But in the southern part of Nigeria, in the more especially in the southeastern part of Nigeria, the old southeastern part of Nigeria, we have to be strong with each other. This is not the time to talk against each other. We are united, moving as a moving train. We can crush anything that stands on our way as we are going now. Time have come, time has gone. We will listen to gossip. For those of you who are still busy gossiping, you call yourself a Biafran, you call yourself a Dudua, more especially the Biafrans who are still gossiping. Sorry for you. You don't know what you are doing. You are digging your grave. Recently, our Supreme Leader Martin Nandekano appointed Samuel Epa to be broadcasting on the Radio Biafra. And we all were happy. Everybody was happy with Samuel Epa, knowing fully well that Samuel Epa can do very well. He can broadcast very well in the, in the Radio Biafra because he has the charisma, he has the word, he's intelligent, he has the information. We are all happy that Simon Epa has been appointed. Because we love Martin Nandekano and we trust Martin Nandekano for a judgment. For Martin Nandekano to point at somebody, to point at somebody, it is not a joke. Once Martin Nandekano recommends a, a person, he must have seen something in that person that makes him to recommend him. But after Martin Nandekano have recommended Simon Epa, which you and I know that is performing very well, a very wonderful person, a very wonderful person who has been doing well, even before he joined the IPOB, he was doing very, very well. When Mazen Nandekan was around, he was doing very well. As a disciple of Mazen Nandekan, he has never withdrawn from any of his duties. He has been performing well, self-will, doing his job effectively. But some people are raising propaganda against Simon Eber, attacking him from all corners, trying to weigh his spirit down. Instead of supporting him, they are trying to bring his spirit down. What a shame. What a shame. These are the Janjawi. These people are not even, they are not even Biafran. I don't think they are, they are really Biafrans. We know there are so many Biafrans that have mixed blood. And these are the people who have sworn that will have, not have our freedom. But we have known them and identified them. And they can never succeed. They can never succeed. How can anybody talk down on, on Simon Epa? How can anybody talk down on Simon Epa? Who has been doing very well. Fighting for Biafra. Speaking up for you and I. Revealing so many secrets that we do not know. And yet... After our Supreme Leader have appointed, instead of you to support him, instead of you to give him a massive support, you are talking trash. Sorry for you. You can't bring him down. Simon Eber is standing strong and you can't bring him down. He's moving ahead. A moving train. If you stand on this way, you're going to be crushed. You're going to be crushed. Anything that stands on the way of everybody that is genuinely fighting for Biafra, if you stand on that person's way, you're going to be crushed. Come with your propaganda. Whatever propaganda you're pushing against Simon Eber is dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. We don't care about what you got to say. The only thing that matters now is people who can come out and say it the way it is. People who can come out. If you feel you can go, go to your own platform. You can have a platform. Build your platform. It doesn't cost money to build your platform. It doesn't cost much. Open your own platform and begin to broadcast. Speak for Biafra. Not when you cannot come out to use your face and speak for Biafra. Those who are speaking on behalf of Biafra, you are there talking trash. Commenting rubbish on their comment section. What a shame. Well, I don't blame them. Most of them might be Janjaweed. So many of them might be Janjaweed. So many of them might be working for DSS. We know them. But for us, we don't care. It doesn't matter what you say to someone like He is still broadcasting and he will continue to fight for Biafra. He will continue to fight for Biafra. Until as in that the county comes out, the DOS, the DOS are there doing their diligent job, doing what they are supposed to do. And some people are busy attacking them. You think they don't know what they're doing? You think an organization that Mazin Nandekano formed don't know what they're doing? You must be crazy. DOS knows what they are doing from A to Z. And they are following steps that Mazin Nandekano have laid down. Whatever they say, we follow. Whatever information they bring, we follow. It doesn't matter whatever they say. We believe in them and we trust them because Mazin Nandekano has given the order that for us to listen to them. Whoever he appoints, we cannot look down on that person. Mazen Nandekano is a chosen person to bring Biafra for us. A chosen person by God, not just by man. And since I'm the chosen, we will follow him until death to us part. We will follow him because he is the right person to give us Biafra. He is the right person to lead us into Biafra. And we will continue to follow him. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter your propaganda. You can hate him for all I care. It doesn't remove anything from his side. We will continue to follow him. That is why every time I conclude my message, I will always play his formal messages. I'm going to play one of his brokers so that you can listen. Listen to his previous brokers for you to be wise and learn. Mazin Nandekano is still speaking loud and clear. Still speaking loud and clear every day. 
If you are a good follower of Martin Luther King, a lover of freedom and lover of truth, you will be hearing his voice in your ear, even while you are asleep. You will be hearing the voice of Martin Luther King. I'm going to play you another reminder of the messages Martin Luther King have left for us. We will never forget him. Watch. Ethnicity is irrelevant. What matters is the policies being pursued by any specific or particular government or regime. Not where they come from. When people tell you nonsense about it is our turn, why don't we wait till 2023, they are only deceiving you. And if you allow yourselves to be deceived, things can only get worse. Fulani terrorists will take over your land. Time and time again, I have warned you on this very matter. But some of you never ever listened. I told our Yoruba friends that this thing you're supporting, this very evil government you're supporting, when they tagged IPOB a terrorist group, you supported them. You are going to pay a very heavy price for it. Had the Yoruba journalist stood up and said, IPOB did nothing wrong, you cannot tag them a terrorist group, believe you me, by today, you will not have Fulani people occupying Yoruba forests and farmlands. Because in this life, what goes around comes around. If you support evil today because you're benefiting, eventually that evil will overwhelm you. The same thing happened to APC. The same thing happened to Fulani Caliphate. They brought in terrorists from all across the Sahel. They brought them into Nigeria to try to force Jonathan out of office. Now Jonathan is out of office. They are now, of course, reaping what they sold, all of them. That is the price you pay for duplicity. That is the price you pay for treachery. That is the price you will continue to pay until you rise up and say enough is enough. It is up to you to do it. You did it during NSARS. You can do it again. Can you imagine Fulani people telling you if you remove Fulanese from Yoruba forest? Imagine Fulani telling you if you remove them from your ancestral lands, there will be war and you are panicking and you have not asked yourself why are they not saying something about the east why did they not say to eastern security network why did they not say to me if you don't stop evacuating foreign terrorists from the forest there will be war because they know they understand psychologically that you don't have what it takes to resist them your lives are being taken away from you. Your forests are being occupied. Your mothers are being raped. Your daughters are being abducted. And the whole national government, presidency, is supporting such people. And you're telling me that Nigeria is viably sustainable. Is that what you're telling me? That somehow this contraption is sustainable, it is viable. It can never be. Because the more you stay in one Nigeria, the more you are inviting the Fulanese to take over your ancestral lands, to take over your villages, and to make life a misery for you. That is the end game. That is the outcome. If you doubt me, go and do a bit of research. Ask yourself, who are the Hausa people? Who are the Nupe people? Who are the Bachama people? All of these people were steamrolled by the Fulani march to the, to the Atlantic Ocean. And now they're in Yoruba land. They're in their forests. They are in their forests. And who is going to drive them away from there, if not the Yoruba youths? Forget about your, your useless governors. Your elders are very strong. I love Yoruba elders. The way they behave, the way they talk. Very, very strong. They said they support Akere uh, Dolu. Uh, this governor of Ondo State. They support him in what he's doing. People must come out to say that enough is enough. When you travel to the north, do you live in the forest in the north? The Igbo people are in Sabongeri in Kanu. Are they living in, 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 in uh, of course, it's house land. Are they living in the forest? They came to the town. They work very hard. They build houses. They build mansions. They develop the entire place. Is that not what they do? What are Fulani people doing in our forest? Nobody can answer that question. They say that they're pastoralists. World aspiring to be a member of the UN Security Council, where you move cattle from place to place. Are you people? Are you people well at all? You so-called Nigerians? Are you? Are you normal in the brain? I'm asking you a simple question. Show me a country that aspires to be in the 21st century, moving cattle from place to place, telling me they're grazing. Which country is that? Please tell me. Some, all of you don't have any shame. When you have people, an entire presidency, coming out to defend a very primitive, archaic agricultural practice, then you know you're in very serious mess. You are in one almighty trouble, I'm telling you. You people are in a mess. The whole land that you get your pig milk from, do they move cattle from, from Rotterdam to, to, to Amsterdam? I'm asking you a simple question.
But they produce the pig milk that you're drinking every blessed day. Why can't Fulani produce pig milk in, in, in Sokoto? Why can't they produce carnation milk in Can? They have the cattle. Before the white man came, did you see any Fulani in your forest? All these people talking rubbish about uh, movement of cattle and movement of... I'm asking you, before Britain came and handed over Nigeria to Fulani, ask your grandfathers, please, or your grandmothers. Ask them. Centuries ago, you have to go back to history to understand how Nigeria came into existence. Fulani has been expanding from day one, from Senegambia. All the way from Senegambia, they've been expanding, 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 and now they are in Okiwe. All the way from Senegambia, they are now in Okiwe. You are setting up yourself to become like the Hausa people. Remember when Hausa was supporting Fulani? We are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. Where are the Hausa people today? I ask you. Where are those Hausa people today? Do you see them anymore? Those saying we are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. Do you see them again today? Do you see them? I'm asking you. No. Because Fulani have completely overwhelmed them. It's called emasculation. Completely emasculated them. And what is happening right now? I ask you what is happening now. Fulani have now come out to tell you we are Fulani people. Is that not what they are saying now? They are not telling you we are Fulani. No more Hausa Fulani. What does that tell you? That the Hausa race no longer exists. Do you want the same thing to happen to you? Hausa is gone. It took Fulani very many years before they came out of their shell. Remember before, many years ago, they told you we are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. We are, because that time, their, their subjugation of the Hausa race hasn't been completed. Now they have completed it. Have they not completed it? Have they not completed it? In the east, they come to the east, I will tell you, oh, oh, you want to be the president or vice? Yeah, 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 yeah. They say, give us land for Ruga. They give them land. I saw Jesus Okadu did that law, Banta. They have taken it over in forever and ever. Give us land in your state. Hope of them are proof to us that you are stood. You give us land in Olu. Hope of them will give them land in Olu. We can go and kill people in, in Obibo. We can kill for them. How many Fulani governors are prepared to kill bandits? I didn't say normal people. I'm talking about armed, dangerous bandits. How many Fulani governors? Go and read your newspapers. You will see it there. Fulani governors are negotiating with them, giving them arms, giving them vehicles, making sure that their life is no longer a misery. But see, they come down to the south. They tell you, give us land for Ruga. Go and kill your people to prove to us that you want Nigeria. That was why Obiose was talking rubbish. He was uh, talking was it yesterday or two days ago. Supported by the BBC. The problem you people have in Nigeria is this. Your journalists, you see people, Punch, Newspaper, Tribune, Vanguard, and Nation, they are your second worst enemies. I'm telling you the truth. They can never, ever be objective in their reportage. Never, ever, ever. That's why all of you are suffering. But you don't know it. They were the same people used to scuttle the NSAS protest. Of course, some of you went about looking for indomie in warehouses. Only Fulani students can now imagine the East. It, it, it took them very many years, nearly 50 years, to accomplish this very simple task of making sure that everybody, be it Ohanese, be it Pandev, be it governor, anybody you're bringing out must come to the North to swear allegiance to the Caliphate. All of them, ban on. Is there any political godfather in the East? There is none. They all go to the North to go and swear allegiance to the Janjaweed. That is why our life is in a mess. That is why they can bring someone like Obiozo and make him the, um, the Ohaneze President General. In front of our eyes, oh, in front of Koro Koro, and what did they, they bribe, they gave money to BBC, they gave money to, to all Zoom newspapers, they started to trumpet Obiozo, oh, Apex Group, Apex, Apex, Apex. You saw them holding their meeting under, under a canopy, a ton without shame, a whole Ohaneze. Under sand, turn canopy, canopy. Maybe you saw it disgraceful and shameful. Talking rubbish. The man looks like a ginger weed anyway. Talking nonsense. These are people they have prepared for you to sell you down the drain. By the time the Fulanis are done with you, believe you me, if you don't rise up now to fight for your freedom, by the time Fulanis are done with you, you'll be more useless than a house peasant.
doing uh, Babiala somewhere in Zaria. Okay. In 2014, 2015, 20, they said he's a warmonger. He's a, he's a warmongering. I went to America and I told World War Congress that this war you are avoiding is going to come to your villages. They said, no, it's not going to happen. What is happening today? When Yoruba was supporting this, the dead idiot called Buhari, did I not warn them that this evil you're supporting will consume you? They never listened. They never wanted to listen. Hey, IPOB is a terrorist group. You're trying to divide Nigeria. But Mietiana is not. People that you are calling bandits, have you heard anybody come out to say, please, Buhari, since presidency is there defending terrorists in the forest, why don't you proscribe them? No, you cannot proscribe a Flani group. Never. And all of you, we are supporting evil. When there is a, the proscribed IPOB, proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, these are Yoruba journalists writing junk. Every day they keep writing rubbish. But their land is under siege. In order to ensure that they get into you, they subjugate you. Look at Yoruba land, the Loring. Yoruba, how did you lose a Loring? You lost a Loring because somebody thought or felt that by aligning himself with what he felt was a superior full and force, he can defeat his own people. Afonja, what happened? As a result of that miscalculation, the great Yoruba race lost a Loring to Fulani Caliphate. That is why in a Loring you have an Emir of a Loring, not an Oba of a Loring, answerable to Sokoto. That is where Lai Muhammad comes from. You can see them. Sokoto slaves in Yoruba land. When I say that it's, 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 a, it's not religion, it has nothing to do with religion. Okay. Unless you prefer epileptic um, a power supply, unless you prepare to live your whole life without running water, unless you want to live in abject poverty and deprivation, your only alternative is a revolution. Let nobody discourage you. All the countries of the world doing very, very well, they all went through a revolution. You must go through it. If you don't go through it, you can never, ever survive. As a people, Fulani will take you over. As simple as that as a secular democratic government must be demolished it must be demolished for you to survive they have to be demolished if you do not demolish them your lives will end very very miserably i assure you that is the future that awaits you now our people must understand this very clearly especially my yoruba brothers and sisters it is about time you stop supporting evil. That evil is in Asorok. That evil is a, a gang, a gang of, of reprobates calling themselves presidency. The more you, so, you keep on supporting evil in the zoo, the more your land will be taken from you. The more your daughters will be raped and abducted, the more your sons will be slaughtered in cold blood. And on that one, Nigeria, there is nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Because one idiot that they groomed will rise up and say to you, Oh no, it's one Nigeria. There is crime everywhere. Uh, haven't you heard about Zamfara? Haven't you heard about um, Katsina? There is crime everywhere. That is not the case. The crimes you have in the north, the insecurity you have in the north, is as a direct consequence of their own actions. We must rise up and say that enough is enough. But there must be no criminality. Once you allow criminality to come in, then you have failed woefully. You have failed woefully. And like, let me also warn once again, there is no Biafran army. DSS can go and create whatever group they like. Give them guns, all, all of that rubbish, in order to justify an attack against ESN. But we are letting the whole world know that we have not floated any Biafran army. There is none. Anything you see is the handiwork of DSS. All of you know this. Everybody understands this very fact that Buhari is no more. You know that Buhari is dead. Everybody knows. But those still perpetuating this very myth that Buhari is alive are those spinning their hopes on 2023. So this is a collection of odd bedfellows. These are people who are determined 
by every means available to cling on to power, to continue to impoverish you, to continue to allow terrorists from all across the Sahel to occupy your farmlands and your forests. They rape your mothers, they abduct your sisters, they kill your traditional rulers, they kill the daughters of your prominent men, and you do nothing about it. Because their only consideration is to keep you focused on this very elusive, better Nigeria to come. You and I know that Nigeria can never, ever be better. We know that very well. The whole world understands that Nigeria can never, ever be better. Why are you pinning your... After listening to Mazen Nandekan, I hope you are refreshed once again. His message is just like food that we eat to strengthen us. It's like water that we drink to refresh us. Whenever you hear the voice of Mazen Nandekan, it gives you more energy to fight on. It gives us hope that yes, Biafra is truly here. It doesn't matter what they say. We will surely be victorious. May God bless Mazen Nandekan. May Chukukukabiyama protect Mazen Nandekan wherever he is. May Chukukukabiyama bless him, guide him, protect him, give him more strength, give him Long life and prosperity. Give him good health wherever he is. Mechuko Kabe, I'm a protest on the Bogo. Mechuko Kabe, I'm a protest on the Bogo. Protect everybody that is fighting for Dudua. Anybody that is fighting for freedom in that country called Nigeria, genuinely. Mechuko Kabe, I'm a protect all of you. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.